Um, if you want, you can actually take the rainbow glitter, like this plain one here, and all you do is just give it a little tap, and the glitter just sticks to it, which is really kind of cool. I mean, it just sticks. So it just sticks on there. Okay, see how beautiful they are? See how this one's not quite so shiny, it's kind of dull, and, but yet it's really shiny on the back. You can take care of that by just by spritzing it with a little bit of cooking spray. Well, not that much, <laughs> just a little bit. But it shines it right up, so it's not dull anymore. And the same with this has been sitting for a long time. If it gets to the point where it's, it's been sitting out and the humidity has gotten to it, you again, can, you can spritz it with the cooking spray and it'll shine it right up. So we're gonna go ahead and make a bunch more snowflakes and I'll, we'll come back doing the exact same thing I've done and then we'll come back and put them on the cake in a few minutes. Well, now I'm ready to put the snowflakes on my cake. Um, I do have, uh, I did notice a couple other snowflakes that were, I did, I did redo them in a light blue. All I did was take was just a pinch of that gel and put it in my uh, cake play isomalt sticks and I got a much lighter blue. That other one was way too dark. So just a teeny little dab will do ya instead of a drop, which is what I had before. And as you can see, they are really a much nicer light blue. I also did some clear ones and I'm just gonna give them a quick spray because of, um, with the, with the uh, pam so that it will clear them up a little bit here. I have a little bit of glitter on some of these. I showed you earlier um, where I put some glitter on. Just sprinkle it on. It sticks by itself, which is really nice. I'm going to put some, some more. Whoops, a little too much there. Just a little bit here and there. Just a couple of them, so a couple of them shine. And it's nice, it just sticks on its own. You don't need to spray them with anything. It normally just sticks to the isomalt. Okay, uh, one thing I did notice though, and that's that if you run your finger, you gotta be careful because the sugar is sharp like glass. Um, so be very careful, that's why I still have my gloves on. But there are some uh, pointy parts here where I poured the isomalt and there's a spot here like where it chipped. I don't know if you can tell there's a chip here on this side. Um, and where I poured it and it kind of left a left a, a sharp edge. There's a couple of these that have that. That's why I have my heat gun that's going to, I don't have one of those chef torches, um, but I have a heat gun. This isn't, a, believe it or not, this is an embossing gun that you use for scrapbooking, and they get really, really, really hot. So be really careful. I know so I still have my gloves on. Um, but you can actually use these with the um, isomalt, which I told you I learned earlier from Susan O'Boyle. So this takes a few minutes to get hot. It gets really hot again, and it'll melt the isomalt. I see a spot. I can see it, I can see it getting melty. I can see that that's, if I touch it, it's soft. So it's nice. If you've got rough edges that you need to melt down, it's really nice. Now see, this is a broken one, which I'm still gonna use, probably. But it also has the rough edges. 